what I'm going to say right now is probably going to shake things up a little bit. Okay. It's not about the number of guys she has had so much as it is about the guys in her past that have had the alpha impact on her. So that's the, the numbers game side of it is not so much the numbers as it is the guys who are included in that number. So if a woman has say between like say three and five guys in her past, okay, ha ha, whatever. You can we laugh at that all you'd like, but let's just say for sake of argument, we're gonna take, take round numbers. She's got a low notch count. She's got a low body count. Those numbers, let's say maximum of five. If one of those five guys was the best she could do, it satisfied what's called the hypergamous doubt. And that hypergamous doubt asks one question. Is he the best I can do? Could I do better? If that, if that question is answered by one of those five guys, that's her alpha widow. It might be, it might be even more than that, but that the, the guy who answered that question, the best, the guy that she, the best sex she ever had, plus the best, uh, emotional impact. And I mean like imprinting her for life kind of impact where she's pining for that guy well into her thirties and maybe even to into her forties. And that's where the fantasization aspect of the alpha widow comes into play. So it's not so much the numbers like now, obviously if a woman has 10 guys in her past or 20 or whatever, triple digits, I don't care. That of course broadens the pool of guys who might be the alpha, the, the most alpha impact. Then along comes you at 30 some odd years old and you think you're going to play by the rules that no one is playing by and you get blind, quote unquote, blindsided right now um, by the fact that there was a guy in her past who really rocked her world. And I have to explain this to you because five, it doesn't even matter how long she was with that guy. If you, if you, and I'm going to suggest that you do this, and this is the only time I will ever suggest you go and look at a Katy Perry video, but go and look at the one that got away and listen to the lyrics and watch the video of this. That is the epitome of an alpha widow. And a lot of guys were saying she was writing that about Russell Brand or like, oh no, it wasn't Russell Brand. It was um, one of her boyfriends from her high school where she was going to get married and she was showing off her ring. Look at my ring, blah, 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 blah. And she was still pining for the guy who was in her high school because she wanted to, um, she wanted to in some way get kind of some kind of like lasting revenge or something like that. Right. But she's really pining for that guy. She doesn't really want to get married to this dude. She wants to get, wanted to get with that guy that got away. Roycey, this is a Roycey term five or maxim five minutes of alpha trumps five minutes of beta so bear that in mind keep that in mind when you are unplugging from the matrix when you are going and you're moving from your blue pill conditioning into a red pill awareness i'm not saying all hope is lost i'm just saying that those are those are the facts and you need to consider them now next thing how do i get past that rollo how do i how do i defeat the alpha widow i gotta fight the ghosts of her past right you have to, first of all, assess who that guy was, and then you've got to find some way to be the, the guy that has the most alpha impact, if that is what you want to do. Whenever I meet guys and they're trying to tell me, how do I get, how do I fight with the ghosts? My first suggestion is this, do you even want to? Should you bother? Is this, if this woman is an alpha widow, bona fide alpha widow, and she can't get over this guy and she can't stop thinking about this guy. And to the point where maybe she's looking him up on Facebook, she's cyber stalking him on Instagram, whatever the social media thing. And it's never been easier for women to do that. If that's the case, then you need to ask yourself this question. Is my pursuit, is my wanting to vet her in the first place worthwhile? Because right there, that's the, that's the question that's going to probably settle the whole thing for you right there. But let's just say for sake of argument, um, if that's something that if, if you think she's so, so high value and so you really want to get with this girl, you really have a connection with her, yada, 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 yada. I'm going to tell you to spend more plates, my friend, but let's say you are bound and determined to get with this one girl and you have to find some way to defeat the ghosts of her past. You have to find out some way to become the guy that rocks her world more than the guy who set the benchmark for it. You've got to be her alpha impact. You have to be such a high value guy, whatever you want to call it, alpha guy. You've got to be the guy that leaves her with such an alpha impression, with such an emotional connection and an imprinting that she forgets about that guy and you become the next guy that she's imprinting on. And I'm using the term imprinting because this is a, actually this is a behavioral psychology term, right? 
when um when like a baby ducklings are born and they they've done these tests way back in the 70s right where where the uh they had this study or the, the behavioral psychologist is watching and they, the ducklings will imprint on like whoever they whoever is going to be their source of survival usually it's the mother duck right and they follow the duck around and you see them like you know follow along that duck because they've imprinted on that this is again theory i'm spitballing you can take this or leave this all as you wish but it's whatever was the first impression whatever was the source of security at that time to the point where the actual researchers became the mother duck and they would follow the little ducks would follow around the researchers instead of the the mama duck okay so take that as you want but it's an it's an imprinting it's uh it's like embedding that mental image of that's the guy that would have done it for me he's the one that got away and women will write hit songs about that guy because that's how significant it is to the female psyche remember optimizing hypergamy consolidating on the best highest quality guy like beyond what her own what she would merit in the first place is the prime directive of hypergamy. Hypergamy only has a very short window in which it can be optimized. Usually that's the party years. And so if, if a good opportunity comes up or if a guy comes into the picture and he leaves her with such an emotional impact that she keeps going back to that, she couldn't lock down. Oh my God, I had the, I, it was right in my hands, you know, uh, the, the victory or defeat taken from the jaws of victory, right? Kind of thing, right? I couldn't, I couldn't lock him down, but I got this guy. He's the, he's the console, he's the consolation prize. And if you watch the, if you watch the Katy Perry video, and also I'm going to also suggest that you watch the very end scene of Titanic. You don't have to watch Titanic. That's not your homework. Okay. But the very end scene of Titanic, you can find it on YouTube where Rose is, is, you know, pining for Jack, who she lost when she was a teenager. And we go, well, you know, it's a, it's a romance, it's a romantic, it's a romance. Yeah, it is. And the reason why it resonates is because that's how significant the alpha widow is. That's how significant optimizing hypergamy is to a woman's life. So you have to, you've got to keep that in mind when you're dealing with a woman who is an alpha widow or assessing whether or not she is an alpha widow. Cause not all women are, are alpha widows. You might be the guy that came in and rocked her world, right? You might be the guy answering that question. Is he the best that I can do? And that's, that's, a, that's something that I think that too many guys don't really keep in mind, especially once they get into a relationship and they think, well, she wouldn't have committed to me if I wasn't the best she could do. No, you have to, you're performance based, right? It is the male burden of performance, the challenge of performance, the burden of performance, the whatever of performance, okay? You've got to perform. End of story. I don't care if you think of dancing monkeys or you're jester maxing or any of that other crap. Okay. Guess what? You're going to perform. That's what it is to be a man today. You've got to perform, whether it's in business, whether it's in the military, whether it's family, whether it's women, whatever your respectability depends on your ability to perform. End of story. Thank you very much. So we have to get into uh, a few things about uh, hypergamy here really quickly. Um, when women are trying to optimize hypergamy, usually it's a, an attempt to make a balance. Now, why do women get hung up on the alpha widow or the, the alpha male? Why do they become alpha widows, I should say? Now, it's almost like they are widows. That's why I use the term widow. So when they get with that guy, the one that got away, it's almost as if that guy had died. It's, he's, he's removed from her life, but he's made such an impact, such an emotional, psychological impact on that woman. It feels as if he is dead. Johnny died at dead man's curve, right? You can't go on back. Jo uh, Jack dropped to the bottom of the ocean off the, off the Titanic, froze to death, and now he's at a watery grave and has been there for forever. Drop the heart of the, where the diamond she had, drop the, the heart of the sea he drops into, and that's really kind of symbolic of like her her soul or her, 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 you know, her love for Jack drops to the bottom of the sea. Meanwhile, the guy who facilitated her Rose, this I'm talking about Titanic Rose's lifestyle to let her be, you know, Amelia Earhart and ride English horses and, and all that other great stuff that you see in the end scenes there where you're looking at her life, uh, the culmination of her life. Jack doesn't figure in there, but she can't get over it. She will never give her entire self to the guy that she is facilitating her lifestyle. She will never do that. I have met old women. I, I shouldn't say that. I've had uh, other women uh, explain to me, or they've related stories like this, where 
their mom or their grandmother had passed away or, or no, excuse me, their, their grandfather had passed away or their, or their father or their grandfather had passed away. And they're talking to their grandmother or they're talking to their mom and who is now a widow. And I've had women tell me this, that they had this conversation with their, their grandmother, their mom, and they they related something like this. Uh, there was always a part of me. I could never give to him. There's always, yeah, I couldn't give it to him, but she could give it to the guy who was in her party years. They could give it to the, to the one who got away. And I think that's a really tough red pill for guys to really sort of, you know, swallow, to, to, to digest, right? To internalize. It's hard because the beta bucks side of hypergamy, the beta buck side of game, like if that's what your drive is, if only you focus on that one side of hypergamy, then when you hear things like that, and it can be third party, it doesn't even have to relate to you personally, but when you hear stuff like that and you realize you're the guy that's facilitating the lifestyle for this woman who is an alpha widow, for whom she will never give you her entire self to. That's why I emphasize genuine desire. That's why that is so bloody important. Genuine, unmitigated, like I will change my religion and run to the ends of the earth, you know, leave my family, you know, move to a different country, that kind of like ride or die girl. That's why that's important because you'll hear, you'll hear stories like that. You'll hear stories like, uh, you know, oh, there's a part of me that I could never give to him. And it's not just, it's not even so much the girl that's the girl that's relate or the, the old woman that's relating it to the younger girl because she's trying to relate it to her to say, don't do what I did right? Go with your, follow your heart, right? Follow your that your heart will never, it's, it's this an appeal to emotions, right? But nail, what, what that is, is it's a, uh, it's sort of a covert message saying, uh, nail down the guy who is your alpha widow, like try to lock, lock that guy down no matter what, because beta blue pill guys, uh, security, the, the, the beta buck side of hypergamy is so well uh, accounted for, or at least the perception of it is so well accounted for today that there's no reason not to do that. Okay. What the, uh, what the alpha widow is, is it is realized. Um, it is a realized, sorry, I got one more thing to do here. It is a realized sunk cost is what it ends up being. So it is, it is the idea or the knowledge or the acknowledgement that that window of opportunity has passed or it, or women are not as able to optimize or to preserve that agency that comes with the sexuality that is derived from those years, right? From the from the party years, from eighteen to twenty eight. Those are the, that's prime fertility for women. Now, women would love to um, to to say that that their you know their looks and their their vivaciousness and their their fertility and their potential and their agency. Uh, is evergreen that it's never going to it's never going to decay it's never going to go out uh, and women rely heavily on social conventions and social constructionism to keep tell really basically gaslight themselves into believing that they're sexy at any age and sexy at any size and it's just men who don't have any who, who won't participate who won't cooperate and and they're unevolved and so that you know they for for women who are you know, overweight or women who are aged out, it is a, it's a, it's a great fantasy. It sells a lot of romance novels. In fact, that's what a lot of romance, like the formula for romance novels is based on that. It doesn't matter how old you are, ladies, you can still have a hot young, you know, you can be, still be a cougar. That's the cougar fantasy there. 